Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes back our old friend Diamante. How are you today? I'm so good, man. Thank you again for having me. It's so good to see you. It's been three years since your last record and a year and a half since you and I had tequila shots in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I had a headache. I don't drink a lot of tequila. I had a headache for like a day after that because I don't drink a lot of shots, but um, you do or have. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a hot day in Brooklyn and uh, you were between tour dates and running around doing a lot of press. So I really appreciated you fitting us in and um, shout out to Lucky 13 again for having us that day. And they're still, they have managed to survive this uh, terrible last year of time. And I hope you have been surviving in this terrible last year of time too. Yeah. I mean, just making the best of this last year. I'm so glad that venue is still around because I remember thinking that place was so rad when we did the interview there and, and the tequila shots that gave you the headache. Um, no, I, this last year, I've actually just, I've been trying to stay as productive as possible, even though I couldn't play shows or tour, I figured, well, what's the one thing I can do? And that was write and record music. So in a way, it's almost like if this last year hadn't happened, I wouldn't have an entire album ready right now. So sometimes things just happen for a reason. Right on. And uh, I'm a believer in that too. And, you know, you were so busy in 2019 and 2018 and constantly on the road. Uh, I really yeah. respect you as a road warrior. I love following your Insta and your other socials and all your fan interactions. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about that in a second, but it definitely had to be even, you know, despite that you, you know, American Dream is coming out in a couple of weeks, super stoked to talk all about it, but obviously it's, it had to be, you know, difficult. I'm sorry if you lost a lot of income, your crew, you know, yeah. photographers, tour managers, bus drivers, all that, and uh, your band and everybody, you know, it's just been such a tough time for our industry. It seems like it's starting to come back, which I'm really grateful for. Yeah, it was rough. Um, I know like crew people, especially that they took a really hard hit this last year. Um, a lot of my artist friends, we had more of like an identity crisis because we, we put so much of our identities in touring and playing shows and, and meeting the fans after the show. And when all that got taken away out of nowhere, I know I was left thinking, well, what do I do now? Who am I? <laughs> like, what's going on right now? So it was definitely a, a mind trip for sure. Right on. And then on the plus side, in addition to writing this album, you had kind of a hit song last year in the middle of everything, which was kind of a really wonderful thing, which was this cover. And although you've done some covers, uh, I think it really stands out as the Iris cover from Goo Goo Dolls, uh, you know, and you had a, an awesome uh, guest shot on there, but it's really uh, was kind of like a little healing, a little bandaid on a bad wound, you know, for the yeah. year. Yeah, absolutely. And the crazy thing is we, uh, we recorded that song and I flew out to the Breaking Ben show with Korn in Reno, Nevada. And that was the last rock concert I attended right before uh, everything shut down and everything was in lockdown. So I had no idea, but uh, it was almost like a, like we needed that song and I had no idea that that was gonna happen, but it, it came at the perfect moment. Right on, and it's such a great uh, perspective. You know, I think a lot of times uh, singers and lyricists and things, things get lost on the listener, like, you know, whatever the original motivation of that song, it's a love song, right? And whatever the original motivation was for Goo Goo Dolls and Johnny to sing that song. And then to hear your voice sing that song and hear like another perspective on a song I never thought of before. I was like, wow, it works, it can work all the way around for anybody. Yeah, yeah uh, I've wanted to cover that song forever. And uh, Neil Sanderson actually had the idea to make it a duet, which I thought was so cool because I've never seen anyone cover it in that way. And so when I was thinking, you know, which male vocalist would I love to have on this song? My first initial thought was Ben, just because we had torn, we had toured so much over the last two years. and. Uh, I, I hit him up on Instagram and, and he was all about it. And uh, it was really awesome to work with him. Right on. Uh, I love that you mentioned last shows. And of course, you know, next shows are hopefully on the horizon. Uh, I imagine with a record coming out and things slowly opening up here in the States and elsewhere, that that's going to be a reality. But of course, I'm, I have to ask you as a person, you have played little, little clubs and big, big amphitheaters and big stages and festivals all over the world. When do you think you will feel safe to yell at an, a stick in front of people again? Because it is a little, it's going to be different and it's going to definitely be in everybody's minds, both in the audience, the photographers and press people and artists. 
Yeah, I, I mean, for me, I think it's more when the crowd feels comfortable. Like if, if you're asking me, I'm ready to go now, let's go play shows. But of course we, we do have to think about those kind of things. And uh, I think um, I'm very optimistic at, that by the fall, hopefully um, shows will be back up and running, uh, especially with you know vaccines rolling through. Um, I don't know, man, I think it's gonna be kind of like a slow rollout at first and we'll, we'll kind of get a gauge of how everyone's feeling. But I think when shows come back, everyone's going to be so stoked, uh, bands and you know, the crowd alike, the energy is going to be insane because people will have missed it so much not having shows the last year and a half. Right on. We're all going to be like a Game of Thrones battle scene. <laughs> like we're going to charge yeah. the doors, <laughs> run to the rail. As soon as it's safe, yeah. I'm gonna hug everyone I know. I'm, I'm warning everyone. It's you know in a respectful, safe manner. I'm gonna hug everybody I see when I get back to a show. Are you a hugger? I'm a, I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a hugger. Yeah. I love it. Um, and of course, you know, and thank you for sharing that. Not you know, again, all this is new territory for all of us. I imagine a whole legion of front people carrying their microphones and suitcases from now on. I think the days of all of us sharing a microphone on stage are probably over. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I feel like um, that should have just been a thing to begin with. <laughs> you know, you show up and the, the microphone's covered in a lipstick color that's definitely not yours. <laughs> it's a little, <laughs> it's a little weird. Indeed, indeed. So let's talk, let's talk American Dream. I'm so stoked for this record. Uh, this is a DIY endeavor for you. You've been independent now for a minute and uh, I'm really excited. This record's awesome. And I think what my favorite thing about this record is it's really uplifting. And again, I think, you know, we all predicted like, oh, after, you know, I don't want to get political, but after like, oh, the last four years of, you know, American life, we're going to have so much rage and we're going to rock and we're going to be so angry. But it's nice to have kind of like an uplifting, positive record after so much shit. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, subconsciously, maybe I felt like I needed to write something optimistic because everything around me just felt so dark and negative. And I really love that the album starts out actually pretty negative. I'm, I'm heartbroken. I have low self-esteem. I'm hitting rock bottom. And then I slowly start to find myself again. And I, I fall in love and I meet somebody new. And, and you see this trajectory in the album where it really does end in a happy place. So yeah, that's, that's funny that you mentioned that because maybe I was doing that subconsciously along the way. Right on. It's like American Dream, the musical. It's a journey in, in, yeah. in three acts, kind of. Yeah. I'm also an exterior kid, so that was always in my mind. Anytime I can compartmentalize something into musical theater terms, I'm going to. <laughs> I love that. I, I grew up in musical theater, too, so I'm the, I'm the same way. I know. I know. Um, but yeah, it's such a, you know, such a strong record and uh it's definitely got equal parts rockers a couple of ballads and and of course iris is on here also again so that's really cool um i think one of the things that's lost in sort of modern music especially rock music is sort of those relationships you have a really cool relationship with howard uh he's been your producer now for a few things and uh he is kind of the go-to guy right now he came kind of funny enough from like very hardcore metal in the 90s but he has become kind of the the rock person now, one of those rock producers. And so it's, I wanted to ask you about like your relationship and your comfort level, because it's hard to find that these days. Yeah, um, it was definitely a journey. I've been working with Howard now since I was 19, so five years now. And um, when, when I first met Howard, I was so nervous. I was super intimidated. I walked into the studio and I was basically like shaking. Um, we did my first album and there was a label involved. So it was kind of like always a, a level of separation, even though he really uh, taught me a lot when it comes to songwriting, when it comes to recording vocals. But this time around with American Dream, it was really just us. There was no a &R, there was no label. So it was him and I and Neil deciding which songs are gonna make the record, which songs need work. Uh, how are we going to record this album? And it was so much more collaborative and fun. And we, we've gotten very close now because of this last album. Right on, right on. And then lyrically, like I said, mo overall very positive, but there's definitely, like you said, some heartache and heartbreak in there and also some self-doubt. But on the other hand, 
some self-reflection, which you usually don't see self-awareness. And we've talked about this before. I, I always found, even in your earliest stuff, you're very wise beyond your years, but you don't find a lot of self-reflection in that generation. So I don't know if you've gone through some life changes, you have gone through some professional changes. And obviously this whole last year, we all went through like a collective psychotic event yeah. <laughs> going on, oh, going yeah. through what we all went through, but just in general, personally, and you don't have to get too personal, but you know, did you have some personal experiences that kind of colored some of these lyrics? Yeah, absolutely. I would say that every single song on the record is almost autobiographical. It's directly from a personal experience or, or a relationship I had or, or a feeling I had. And so I went into this album thinking, I really want to make this as personal and vulnerable as possible. But in order to do that, I had to be honest. So that's why you hear a lot of these songs. I'm kind of calling myself out because it's not always the other person's fault. You know, we all have things that we do that aren't necessarily healthy or just bad habits, bad patterns. And so I thought the only way to really truly be vulnerable is just throw it all out on the table. And there's, there's a kind of cathartic feeling when you do that too, because you're no longer holding on to it. I feel like when you just lay it out there for the entire world to listen to, you, you feel it and you let it go. And it's, it's incredible. Nice. Uh, for some fun stuff, I have to give you some props. I love that even though it's only for a few measures, you spit some fire bars on the track Unfuck You at, toward the end <laughs> that I loved. I actually had to rewind it and listen to it a few times before. Oh. Normally I like I hear a song and I'll hear the whole album and then I'll find a couple of songs I like and listen to them over and over. But I actually stopped and went back to that part a few times before I l listened to the rest of it because I love that part so much. And it was really quick, but it was really smart. I loved it. Thank you. Yeah, that I, I love that song because it's so out there and it's definitely um, experimental and a little like shock value, but it's also ridiculous on purpose. And I think that's why I love it so much because there's a lot of seriousness on the album. There's these serious songs. And I figured I needed one that was just kind of like ridiculous and out there. So I can't wait to do that one live. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> Nice. I like that you're not afraid to show your goofy side and also, and like you said, just be ridiculous for the sake of it. Um, it's still rock and roll, right? We don't have to, yes, we have a lot of serious topics and a lot of stuff to get off our chests, but we don't have to always be, you know, so straight laced all the time. You can open up and have some fun. That's cool. And uh, yeah, there's a couple of other, there's a couple of other really tight ones. Uh, and there's a lot of up-tempo rock stuff for the people that have been, you know, following you other than the couple of duets and, and guest spots, you know, most of your stuff is very up-tempo and rocky uh, from coming in hot, which I still rep and I still like, and, and I imagine you'll continue to do that stuff live. Um, but it's cool. Like, I think uh, sometimes, it, you know, when you go to make another record and you have kind of some early success, which you have, you know, uh, I wonder if some of that stuff kind of plays into your thought process or you just go out and make the record you're going to make. I was uh, talking to Howard actually about this when he, we were making the first album coming in hot and there were some difficult moments as is, you know, natural with any album process. And he would tell me, you think this is hard or just wait till you have to do your second album because that's when you, you really have to either like beat what you did the first time or uh, just, you know, grow. And so um, there was that kind of pressure, I think always with the sophomore album, but I didn't feel it as much because I was just so excited to make this album and it was so much fun and I had all this creative control because I wasn't doing it with a label and I didn't have all these limitations or, or rules or restrictions. So I was just kind of like, I can kind of do whatever I want. So I didn't feel that pressure as much. And I think when you listen to the album, you can totally hear this is Diamante and this is exactly what she wanted to do. Right on. I love it. Um, speaking of doing what you want to do, it's kind of funny. Obviously, you know, blue is your color. Uh, <laughs> one of your colors, it's what you're known for. But it's kind of interesting. This is a very, not just that the album has like a striking red color on the background beside the photo of you. It is a very vibrant red color. It's, it's like moments of rage, it's moments of love. Red, you know, symbolizes a lot of things. So it's kind of funny that you've gone from kind of like the blue pill early record to the red pill second record. Yeah, absolutely. Um, blue and red are my two favorite colors. And I think 
when I wrote the song American Dream, which was actually the last song written for the album, I, I knew that's going to be the album title. And so, you know, American Dream got the red, white and blue. So it all it all kind of just goes together. Right on. In this period of time between writing music and producing a new album, what else have you been doing to kind of just stay sane? Any hobbies, activities, things you need to do every day in your little tool kit to just keep Diamante happy? Well, so the last year since we went in lockdown, I actually went back to college full time. And because of that, I was able to just do school and it really took up a lot of my time besides making the album. And now I'm like uh, two months away from graduating, which is crazy to me, which wouldn't, again, wouldn't have happened if this last year hadn't been all in lockdown. Um, I really got into just being outside in nature because that was kind of the only thing you could do, especially here in LA, it was very strict, very closed down. So um, me and my, my family, we would go on hikes a lot with my dog. And I really started loving that and being outside and just um, being with nature and exercising and getting the fresh air and the sunlight because I know uh, being cooped up for so long was kind of driving me nuts along with a lot of other people. Right on. Congratulations about school. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, it's wild. It's like it took me six years, but finally did it. Going back to school was one of the best things I ever did. Uh, do you mind sharing what you're getting your degree in? Yeah, so I am getting it in business administration. And uh, I just figured there's so much you can apply in business to what I'm doing in everyday life, um, whether it's marketing, whether it's accounting, whether it's uh, economics. So anytime I had like a project or a paper, I always made it about the music industry. And so I ended up having a lot of fun getting this degree. That's amazing. I'm sure you have a lot of good intel for your case studies and obviously great, uh, sort of a great background for future businesses. You have a lot of things you're interested in, I'm sure, beside music. So who knows what, what the future may hold for business hat Diamante. <laughs> yeah. B business hat versus like the biker hat. Yeah, there's, there's one look and then there's the other look. <laughs> There it is. You can do both. Like I said, I had to do both today. So, uh, you know, you have to do what you got to do. Um, super stoked. What else have you been doing? Uh, I was going to say in terms of um, music listening, is there any uh, particularly great music you've been listening to during this time? I know a lot of people have spent the time rediscovering old favorites or finding new artists to dig on. Yeah, I think um, I've been listening to a lot of Nothing But Thieves, uh, Muse, The Killers, um, kind of going back to the first rock that I discovered, like more on the alt rock side. Um, yeah, just, just kind of those bands. And, um, it's, it's weird because I feel like when I'm making an album, I'm, I'm doing so much music that I don't find a lot of time to listen to other music. <laughs> I feel like in my free time, I'm, I'm more either watching shows, movies, being outside, reading even i've picked that up lately because the last couple of years i definitely slacked on reading definitely hard to get books read when you're on a tour bus yeah absolutely. as much as you were as much as you were right any any good books anything you want to share for people to check out that you particularly like uh i mean not necessarily new i'm just right now i'm rereading the lord of the rings trilogy because it's just so good and it's such a classic and uh, I love anything fantasy, uh, fantasy or like uh, magical. So yeah, Lord nice. of the Rings. Can't go wrong with Lord of the Rings and like half the lyrics in all of rock and heavy metal are basically stolen from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, absolutely. Like all of Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, Rush, Thin Lizzy, you know, Black Sabbath, they all borrowed heavily from there. So that's a lot of fun. Good stuff. Good times. Good times. Uh, so I don't know if you have anything you can talk about yet, but uh, I imagine touring is in the works or booked or hope, hopeful plans to announce soon. Anything you can share or tease? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have some festivals lined up for September. I actually did announce one recently, Incarceration Festival in Ohio. That one's going to be so cool. I've never played this one before, so I'm stoked. A um, couple more festivals and Hopefully just touring back in 2022. 
Awesome. I'm a big music festival fan myself. Incarceration is awesome. We've covered it. It's now a Danny Wimmer associated fest. So we love the Danny Wimmer fest here at Ghost Cult. And then you've played a few also. And what, I, what I'm really stoked about is that in, I don't know if it was just happened to be the time, the timing, because things are all out of sorts. Bands are starting, you know, trying to reorganize their lives and plan for things that are hard to plan for. But what I like, I saw, just saw the incarceration lineup and it's really diverse. So it's really cool to see Hailstorm right at the top with Slipknot and Rob Zombie. You're on the bill. There are artists from across the world, like The Who from Mongolia. So it's really cool that it, like it, when live music comes back, it's this rainbow that everybody needs to see. And it's not just a bunch yeah. of dude bro, it's not just a bunch of dude bro bands and <laughs> one, you know, one diverse artist. So it's really cool that they've really taken the work to really build a really uh, comprehensive build that, you know, is for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. That lineup is so cool. I almost want to like stay and because uh, I have friends, so many friends that are playing on Sunday because I play on Saturday. I almost want to just like stay the next day just to hang out and watch the shows. Nice. I saw that Mudvayne is actually the headliner for Saturday yeah. and that's their big first show in like 12 years. It's going to be that show unless they it's do crazy. something secret. Yeah. It's, it's wild that I'm glad they're back. I don't think it was in doubt that they wouldn't come back, but it's really cool to see bands returning and you're seeing a lot of bands from that era kind of come back system briefly came back now and uh, mm -hmm. st stained, I guess, his books and rebooked their previously announced, but canceled tours. So it's cool to see that generation get some love and it certainly had to have an impact on you when you were young. Yeah, absolutely. And so now coming full circle in 2021, if you had told me, you know, one day you're going to open up for Mudvayne, I, it just goes to show how cool and diverse these lineups are. I would have never believed you. I would have said, no way, no how. So I'm excited. Right on. And yeah, and I hope that leads to more festivals for you and hopefully some more headline tours. And uh, I personally, I, uh, I think, I feel like you're the kind of artist I almost want to see you in a small club. I know we have to wait till it's safe, but, uh, and, yeah. and, I, and I, it's not, a, a more, I, of course, I want you to be as successful as possible, play all the big shows, but I almost like, I love hearing you sing and I want you to sing. I like an intimate setting sometimes for a great singer. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and I feel like that fits you too. I love the club shows and the club tours just because of that intimacy and you get to really uh, feel the crowd and always after a club show I go out and I meet and talk to every single person who comes because that's my favorite part of playing shows and uh, getting to be like deep within the cities and exploring and you just walk out the venue and you discover the coolest like uh, coffee shop or or bar even so I can't wait until that's safe again because club touring is actually one of my favorite things to do. Right on. And that is an awesome segue to my final question for you today, which is, as I mentioned, you have a really deep bond with your fans. And part of that was fostered over social media. Obviously, the last year, all we have had is social media. Yes. And so there will be sort of the actual social part of social media being together. And I think that's going to be, you know, not just by distance, but in person together. And, uh, you know, people reposting videos of you and selfies and you walking through the crowd and you at the merch table. So I feel fortunate that we've had the last year of social media, but as you know, has any of the last year for it changed for you since you've been off the road and having to do everything for a distance? Or do you think you're going to just go right back to the way it was back when you were doing these big tours? I, I would want to go back to the way it was just because it was connecting with people in, in person and hearing their stories or how my a song has impacted them or, or helped them in some way. To me, that was the most fulfilling and gratifying component of this entire career for me. So I would love to go back and, and sign the titties and shake the hands and kiss the babies. That's my favorite part. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, I love that. I love people. I don't want to say cosplaying as you, but showing up as you, dressed like you in yeah. homage, paying homage to your look. Little kids, grandmas, everybody. I'm here for all of it. And uh, thank you so much for doing what you do. One of my more favorite artists to come along in the last few years. Oh, it is always a pleasure. Yeah. I'm so proud of your successes. I am definitely excited. American Dream comes out May 7th and I want everyone to hear it. And uh, I hope the next time we do this, it's once again shoulder to shoulder with a drink. Tequila shots. <laughs> <laughs>